Hi there, welcome to Ben's Astrophotography. About three months ago, I got my Takahashi Epsilon 180 telescope, which is kind of notorious for its collimation. Then I was even more surprised to uh, read the Takahashi's user menu because I can understand nothing on it. Then I searched online and found myself not alone because a lot of complaints there, but there's very limited documentation on how to do it. That's why I'm making this video uh, to hope that I can put something on the internet in the video format that can help. All right, let's start. The good news is all these collimation kit from here to here for uh, items are included free for every single North American uh, Takahashi orders on Epsilon 180. So let's assemble it. It's quite straightforward. This thing, uh, this thing goes onto the focuser, and uh, there's a there's eyepiece holder. So you just uh, screw it in, and then there's this collimation eyepiece. If you can see, there's a very small hole in the center of it. And the, there's no opticals here. The only purpose for this thing is to make sure that your eyes are looking at the center of uh, this small, very small hole. So I put this on and this one is a rotator, so rotation uh, lock. So yeah, now it's locked. Uh, the other thing uh, which is pretty tricky is that here you have this uh, nylon um, things going through for a to make a cross okay as you can see it's pretty hard to use just use the tapes and the nylons actually that's according to the instruction I should do this but I find it extremely hard to uh, really tighten it properly so this thing if you can see it's a bit it's a bit loose and this cross is not exactly 100% at the center so uh, still, I should put this in, Bear, bearing in mind this is just a reference, right? Okay, so let's do a final tightening. And this is the collimation kit assembled. So it goes to the focuser like that because this thing goes inside the telescope and uh, if you don't take the coma character off, it will uh, just uh, hit it. I'm lucky enough to find a smartphone holder. This is a Teleview uh, Fullmate uh, to have the, and this adapter uh, from Teleview 2 uh, so that it can be hooked up to my smartphone and uh, I can really show you what's happening there inside that small hole taking videos. All right, here's the whole setup. As you can see from the screen of uh, my iPhone, I can see the collimation uh, status and I'll take a video from there. So here it is the eyepiece uh, and then the focuser and then here's the OTA. One more important thing is that you need to make sure in front of OTA there's a strong and uh, steady light source. The stronger the light, uh, the, the easier you can do the collimation. Okay. Before I start, let me introduce the screw sets. Basically, there are four screws, one main screw here and three smaller screws. The main screw, the function is to pull the secondary mirror outwards towards the sky and then these three smaller screws uh, they are pushing the secondary mirror on the outer ring to uh, to the earth so the pull and push uh, to make sure uh, the secondary mirror is fixated in its place in the best collimation possibly and then um, there are three bolts before you do any collimation you need to loosen these three bolts and uh, after it's done you need to tighten it so that uh, it will be in place first i should loosen the main screw try to loosen it and uh, it's pretty tight 
Okay, as you can see, when, once I loosen it, the collimation goes completely off. It doesn't matter. And then I need to loosen these three bolts. And then I need to loosen these three small, smaller screws to make sure the secondary mirror will have enough place, enough space to move around to uh, get a best collimation. So I will loosen it like that. Loosen this one. Okay. Oh, this one. Remember, don't do too much. Uh, I don't want it to be uh, off on the ground, right? Okay. Once you have loosened all these screws, you need to hold this secondary mirror with a steady hand and uh, try to put this small dust if you can see it there uh, uh, let me put it outside a little bit you see the dot yeah this is the center of the secondary mirror and uh, you need to align it with the concentric circles yeah. it takes a little while to familiarize yourself with all these uh, movements okay now you see i'm pushing and pulling the secondary okay that's the direction that uh, the dust really goes now i'm tilting this secondary mirror so this is the direction that that affects the tilt, that can control the tilt. Okay, and you see if I get to some obstruction there. Okay, apparently I need to tilt downwards. Better, tilt a little bit more. Almost there. Okay, tilt. Yeah, I think this is good. Okay, so I find this is a very good position to do the collimation so you put your hand hold your hold the mirror with the, the right hand and put it into right place okay and then tighten the screws first to the main screw keep it steady okay don't not too much don't don't be too tight and then just tighten the other screws as long as the thing doesn't move away. Okay. Of course, when you have more hands in it, the light will be obstructed a little bit more. Now I need uh, one more light. Make sure. Yeah, so you can see this is the dust. It's right there in the center. Okay. Yeah, that's it. All right, now I should tighten all these bolts, okay? Uh, let me tighten the screw first, that's good. And then I need to make sure this thing doesn't move and then tighten it. Okay. 
that's it. So, as you can see, the collimation for a Newtonian telescope like Epsilon 180 is pretty difficult. Even after 10 times, it takes me more than one hour to complete it. The good news is, for a high-end telescope like that, uh, it's supposed to be good out of the box. So hopefully you won't need to do the collimation very often. All right, that's it for today. I don't hope you can uh, really enjoy it, but I hope it will be helpful. Thank you very much. See you next time.